you want that effect, there you go. Simple way to get it. Welcome back to the Mix Academy. In today's video, we're continuing our series from good to great, where I'm showing off mixing enhancements that I did for the track around here by the band Navigate. Super thanks again to Justin Nice, the producer, producing his son's band, incredible gesture to let me use the tracks here, but also to be able to feature them inside the Mix Academy's VIP membership. So if you like what you hear, definitely check out the link in the description where you can get your hands on these tracks and mix it for yourself. Today we're looking at vocals, but before we do, I wanna share, if you're new to the Mix Academy, I've got a free gift for you. It's my vocal mixing checklist. Everything you're about to see here, this is gonna reveal the step-by-step -step instructions for how I mix a vocal, what I'm looking for from the raw files, audio repair, editing, tightening things up, EQ, compression, EQ before compressor, after compressor, both, when, why, how, all that good stuff. Definitely check that out. Link in the description below, the vocal mixing checklist, and now on to the vocal track here today. So we've got automation, we've got bus processing, all kinds of good stuff to get to. First, I wanna kind of explain my routing, my signal flow, what I'm thinking. This session came back to me. I created a template for Justin. We mixed a couple songs together, and then he took the template, and then uh, called me and said, hey, what about you taking on a few of these songs, helping me finish this album and writing automation and all that stuff, which inspired the whole From Good to Great series. I said, absolutely. And he sent it back to me and the lead vocal had been tracked and placed on all these individual tracks. Now, typically, if I have multiple tracks for the lead vocal in a session, it's because I've got some overlapping parts and I need them to be separated, but I don't wanna to have to recreate, have EQ and compressors all over every single track. So we have all these tracks, verse, little phrases, snippets, all are on individual tracks. They all lead to, you'll see here, you'll see they all go to the lead voc, sort for lead vocal, right? So that lead voc bus is down here. That's normally what would just be my main audio track if I had everything on one track. This is where my initial EQ, compression, saturation, whatever is gonna take place here. But you'll see I've got a vocal crush bus. So I'm sending this lead voc track, the lead vocal is getting sent to a vocal crush, and that's where I'm hitting it with a distressor. Not really what this tutorial was about, but I think it's important for you guys to see the signal flow. You can see it's is lots of compression on the vocal crush, blending that in parallel. And then the two of those are gonna meet at my lead vocal level track, which is where I'm gonna do my finalizing EQ. I've got DSing. You can see we've got two DSers, one for the lower range of his sibilants and then one for the upper range, controlling them separately. Finishing EQ, gain staging, top end, you can see all that in another video. But basically that's the routing. And then the lead vocal level, after it's been blended, compressed, all that good stuff, that's where I'm gonna send my effects from. So chorusing, reverb, delays, delay throws, saturate, all that stuff is gonna come typically from that lead vocal level. And that's why you see some are bypassed because they get turned on and off throughout the mix, depending upon what's going on. Now that you kind of have a bird's eye view of the routing, the signal flow, let's come back here and let's take a look at some of the processing. So you'll see here, you've got these weird looking gaps with the automation lane. Well, those are me turning on and off the bypass for saturation. For this song, I decided to saturate the vocal, give it some character, and then you can see that actually right here. Bam, so the main vocal is getting this London saturation. But then what I've done is I've chosen to saturate more certain lines or phrases. If you listen to, uh, recently I checked out the Neil Avron uh, mixes for, I think he mixed, Melancholy Kaleidoscope, uh, may have been someone else, but anyways, whoever did it, in the critical listening videos that I've done here on the channel, definitely check those out, I noticed that there were saturation throws, and so you think of a delay throw, you got certain phrases, and then you get to a word, and it's like, well, let me put a delay on that, and you automate the bypass of a delay, or the send, and you get the delay, but just for that word or phrase, and so that was happening in the Melancholy Kaleidoscope track, and I was like, I gotta do that, so pulled that in, learned a little bit from some of the references and decided to start using that. I've been using it a ton since. So here we go. We have the vocal is saturated. Let's take a listen to just the, the vocal and what we've got going on. We'll put him on the spot here. We're going to solo the lead vocal. Some comfort in sitting on the couch watching some TV show that everybody knows about. Just so you got something to So you can hear show that everybody knows about that everybody knows about is getting that extra little bit of love this may be like in pop you double the vocal or in rock too you can double the vocal triple the vocal and add emphasis to certain phrases certain words exact same concept except from doing it with a, a saturation plugin so you can see all of these are saturation throws nothing ever happens around here so the main the 
title of the song around here when he says that I'm emphasizing that with saturation I've done it in two different forms so the first one that you've been hearing now is a 40% mix with the saturation set pretty high and then I have another instance where the mix is backed off a little bit so I didn't want quite as saturated of an effect for a certain phrase and so I've dialed that back and automated from there let's go up here let's show off maybe this automated vocal here got a telephone vocal we showed off the telefy from black salt audio in the guitars video and here is the lead vocal with telefy automated You want that effect? There you go. Simple way to get it. There's the settings. I automate the bypass on, and then I'm almost always dialing back mid-range top end, something just kind of sweetening the sound within EQ. So it's great to have this. Now, let's say you wanted to get that without the Telefy. So you got to talk about. Let's turn these off, and let's come over here and let's rebuild that sound. So Fab Filters got us a cool little preset called Phone. That's close. Now we need to add some compression. Let's come over here and we'll grab a quick compressor. So you got something to talk about. Okay, and then we have a slap delay. So let's go grab a slap delay. I think you can get the point that yes, you can recreate the sound of what's going on in there, but it's going to take you more time than slapping on Telefy and dialing in a sound. You're going to add more plugins. Let's come. We want to slap. That'd be between 90 and 120. Let's say 105 milliseconds. We'll pull back the wet knob. back even more okay so now we have to automate each of these plugins we're gonna come in here and we're gonna you get the point I'm gonna stop it but I can get that same sound but now instead of automating one plugin or using one plugin to get the tone I'm using three four to get uh, the same effect so huge shout out to black salt audio Jordan I'll put a link in the description it will be an affiliate link but it's stuff that I'm using love it and highly recommend it so feel free to use that link moving on there is the vocal effect from that verse Gosh, I love that. But let's show the, the crazy throw. So crazy throw is a bus set up down here. Certain words are going to get this delay. You can see I'm using the Valhalla delay, the BBD. Pick any delay. The concept of doing a delay throw is what this is about. But I got an eighth on the left, dotted eighth on the right. It's my favorite kind of go-to for delay. And then I'm EQing the crap out of it. So remember that telephone preset? I told you, I use it all the time. And this is in my template. We're filtering it out, but then backing off and allowing some of the low mids to come through, just kind of shaping that to taste. So we've got that delay opening up several times throughout the track. Here's an instance. Bam, still, having fun. And that's still having fun. Let's go solo that out. Adding kind of an ambiance. It's a delay and it sounds cool. It is a delay, but it also gives that vibe of like reverb without it being reverb. I'm not a big fan of soaking things in reverb. And so to pick and choose certain words or phrases to be able to throw to a delay is a cool technique. I want to show that off for you guys. 2 a.m. still having fun. And there's some comfort in sitting on the couch watching some TV show that everybody knows about. Just so you got something to talk about. So you can see that crazy throw was on for the special effect. It came on for, I mean, any number of words and phrases here. Similar, like I said, to using a double. So there's another one. You got the crazy throw. What's one more? Let's go. I wonder, did I automate the music verb? Oh, of course I did. So here's a, an instance where I chose not to use the mute automation, but I used the fader. And so you can see that reverb. I'm drawing that in by hand. If you're in Pro Tools, you come over here and go to touch put the automation mode into touch mode, and then you just grab the fader, and you can ride it up or down or zigzag, do whatever you want with it, and draw in the automation. So here's the automation I drew in for this particular reverb. Back hole in the dawn. For the end of that phrase. And so here we come out here again. Now I've been looking for composure. Trying to subdue the pain Try to understand the feeling But I love myself either way So clearly hear how that's enhancing the vocal, pulling out some space from it, spilling it out into the track. Now, another thing, don't do this in solo. You need to make sure you do your effects. Maybe you dial them in in solo, what you like, but... Always in context, checking to make sure that you're giving it enough 
into the track. You got guitars or the loops or any other thing that you may need to really boost the crap out of that reverb in order for it to be audible in the track. I do send all the vocals to an all vocals bus. And in this song, I chose to give a little bit of a lift to kind of 1.5. Felt like the vocals overall needed a, just a little bit more to come forward. And so I chose to do that there, but almost always it's just virtual mix bus hit hard. We'll talk about that in the mix bus video. Depends on the genre. For this one, I'm hitting it very hard. Um, red light is on for a lot of it. If I'm going for a little more clean, I may back that off for a little more pristine sound, but there we have it. So, hey, we've looked at the drums. We looked at the bass. We looked at the guitars. Now we've hit the vocals. If you want to see me cover all of my bus processing and go in-depth with how I'm setting up my bus compressors, the saturation on the two bus, the parallel compression, clipping and the limiting, I just spoiled it for you. We're going to go over all those settings in the next video, which you can click right in here somewhere, and I'll see you over there. Thanks again, guys.